the Joe Rogan experience. I think I've been Florida man a few times. And, yeah, <laughs> add that to my belt. How did you get involved in honey pythons? First of all, can you bring that python head up? Let me, yeah. let me see that python head. I need to see because so, I, so I this purposely is, didn't look. This is actually the one that bit me. That oh I almost God. bled out in the middle of the Everglades, caught by myself in the middle oh of the Everglades. Oh, my God, dude. And that, that bit you? Yeah, yeah. And this snake, 17 foot, 7 inches, <gasps> 135 pounds. And that's no eggs inside of it, no meal inside of it. That's solid snake muscle. And at the time, that's about what I weighed. So it was a fair Everglades battle royale. Oh, my God. Can I see it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, tell me the scenario. What happened? So um, I was... The mouth on this thing, James. Yeah, and look at all those teeth. Look at that. It's insane. Yep. And, and that head actually has shrunk substantially from the freeze-drying process. Uh, all critters freeze-dried that for me, and, uh, you know, it takes all the moisture out of it and really, right. really shrinks down. Um, so I was out hunting the Everglades. Um, I was actually out in my 14-foot John boat um, by myself, and I was checking uh, spoil islands out there. These islands were dug maybe 100 years ago or more um, when they dug the canal. They were made 100 years ago when they were digging the canal. And they've been up there, you know, uh, gaining vegetation, getting real nasty. And a lot of these critters come up on them to breed, to feed, and to nest. And um, I was out there looking for, you know, a, a python like I normally do. And I came across her. Um, I knew... Immediately when I saw her that she was very large, possibly the largest python I've captured. And I could only see the, um, the back half of her, maybe like the back third of her. But I could tell she was a monster. My heart is pounding. Uh, I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't. But, you know, my main fear in a situation like that is not that this snake's going to kill me. I'm confident in how to handle these animals, uh, confident in, in my ability, but I'm worried this thing's going to get the best of me, overpower me, and possibly I lose it. Um, it gets away into the swamp to eat more of our native wildlife. Coming across an animal like this, even with the situation we're in in the Everglades, is still a once-in-a-lifetime you know, opportunity. It really is. Uh, I've caught a number of them, but I, I spend a lot of time out there. So I'm getting ready to capture this, this snake, building myself up to it. Uh, the safest way to go about it is to find the head, grab the head with both my hands, and keep her from coiling on me, wrapping around me. Uh, I can't find her head. Her head's buried in vegetation, buried in, in the maiden cane. I just can't see it, and she's working her way slowly off the island. So I know I got to quickly do something. I'm afraid if I, if I get closer to her head, I'm going to spook her, and she's going to try to start moving away. I grab onto her tail, and this is kind of a bad situation to be in, especially with all the thick vegetation. These snakes can easily overpower you and will actually drag you out into the swamp. There's just no stopping it. It, it intertwines in all the weeds and just drags you. So I know grabbing this thing, my goal is to piss it off and get it to start striking at me where I can see that head and grab a hold of that head. <laughs> Otherwise, this thing's, this thing's gone. <sighs> so I get a hold of it, and it starts dragging me. It's pulling me off the island. I, so is it wrapped around you? Or are you no, just no, no, no. No, it's, it's stretched out. And but you're hanging on. I'm hanging on to it. Yeah, it's, right. it's the it, this thing's eating alligators, eating deer. It's the biggest thing out here. It's not worried about nothing. It's not scared of me. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of seeing what I'm doing. So I got a hold of it, and it's starting to... Are you wearing gloves? No. How are you able to really grab it? If I had gloves on, I wouldn't be able to grab it. I, I need my bare hands to be able to work and, and feel everything, have the grip. Um, gloves gloves will just get in the way. Even something with like a texture to it? I don't want any of that. Okay. I don't want any of that. They just get in the way. Um, so I got the snake dragging me out into the swamp, uh, you know, losing this battle. I'm able to dig my heels down into the limestone that I'm standing on, the limestone island, and I'm able to, to, to stop her. I'm not gaining on her 
but I got her stopped, and we're kind of in this Everglades tug of war right now. And she starts to get pissed off. She starts hissing. She starts turning around on me. And this this is what I want. But I got to not get bit. You know what I mean? Holy um, fuck. A snake this size, to my advantage, they're, they're slower than a smaller snake. They have a lot of body mass. They're going to tire out quickly. And uh, her strikes aren't going to be lightning fast. So she's striking at me. I'm dodging her strikes. Every, oh my god! Everything's going good. Every Floyd Mayweather out there, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> doing a little duck and weave. Everything's going good. Um, normally, when a strike, uh, when a snake strikes, it's going to strike out, recoil back, get ready, strike again, recoil back. That's how they strike. That's how they get that power. They kind of like recoil their body. So it's it struck. I dodged it. It recoils back like a third of the way and hits me with this little sneak attack strike that I wasn't expecting. The snake is anywhere from 10 to 20 years or more old. So it's been around the block. It's a smart snake. And, um, you know, snakes don't normally do that. I think she she kind of knew what she was doing. She struck. She got me on my arm. Got an artery, got some veins coming off my artery, and uh, that that doesn't do it justice at all. Um, their their teeth are all they're punctures, so uh, you know they're like needles. So they puncture down deep. You can see them here. They're fucking. You can crazy. see that top one gets right into my main vein, and the real bad one was on the top of my arm that you can't see, where it's on this. I think it's an artery. I made it wrong. Coming coming uh, on the top of my arm, and. I got very lucky. Uh, normally, w- when they bite, they they latch on. And she would have latched on. She would have wrapped around me. And, you know, I would have been in a very, very bad situation being out there by myself. Thank the good Lord. I, I had him on my side that day. Um, she struck. She bit. I was able to grab her head. And I don't know if it's how I pushed it forward and pulled her off or what. Because all their teeth are recurved, like like fish hooks almost, kind of. Got her right off of me. Grabbed her head, pushed her off of me. She didn't latch on. She was trying to bite again. Maybe maybe that's she didn't think she had a good bite, and she was trying to regrip. But I got lucky. N- now I have her head. I'm bit. I'm spraying blood all over the Everglades. But I, I have her head. So now, now my main thing is controlling her without exerting myself too much because every time i'm i'm doing anything i mean it's it's i've never seen blood come out of my body like this you know right. really um my heart's pounding adrenaline's going and uh my main thing is just to stay calm i, I don't think i'm necessarily gonna bleed to death i mean the, the amount of blood i'm seeing across my mind but but i really don't think i'm gonna bleed to death I'm worried about blacking out from blood loss, the heat, exerting myself. What's this snake going to do if I black out? It's going to wrap around me. It's going to kill me. A hundred percent. Right. Um, You know, I don't think it'd necessarily be able to swallow me and eat me, maybe. uh, But it could definitely kill me. So I'm really trying to control my heart heart rate, trying not to exert myself. Um, The snake's biting at me you know going nuts uh you can see the video on my youtube of where i'm just covered in blood and um i have a snake bag with me to put whatever snake i was planning on catching in the bag this snake is way too big for that bag so i actually am able to use that bag to tie off my arm and kind of do a little red while you're holding it down yeah why, why i got the the head in one hand and i'm tourniqueting my arm I think it was like this, tourniqueting my arm with with the other and got my arm sent shut, you know, kind of got the bleeding under control and I was able to kind of collect myself. The snake is pretty much worn out at this point. She's cold blooded, so they gas out after about a 10 minute fight. She's like a limp noodle. So I'm kind of just laying on her, catching my breath. Now I got to get her back to my boat where I can put a bullet in her head. Because I, I don't just walk out around out there with a gun. All these snakes I catch alive, put them in a bag, and it's just easier to not have a gun on me. Jesus. And um, 
Why is it? Would it be so hard to have a gun right there? Well, I'm I'm literally crawling through cane and sawgrass, and it gets snagged. You can lose a gun very easily, and it's just it, it's in the way. And 99.9 percent of the time, I'm not going to need one. And especially me, I'm the kind of guy where if I come across a 30 foot snake, you know, which pythons don't get that big. Let's say I come across a 30 foot snake, some crazy. I ain't shooting it. I'm I want to catch it, you know. That's, <laughs> dude. That's what I'm all about. Oh my God! This is uh, this is you after yep. this thing bit you. Yeah, this is Holy shit, right where I'm getting man. ready to try to turn a kit my arm. Holy shit, man! And you're filming this. Yeah, I got my shoulder cam on, and then I put a GoPro on the ground. This is wild. And you know, normally I I don't always get great fo- i mean i get pretty good footage with my cell phone my shoulder cam but like i i was set up this day and i knew i had my gopro running when this thing bit me are you cinching up at the top of your arm above the wound above the wound above the wound, okay. above the above wound. The wound. yep above the wound and uh you know to be honest with you the the first thought that went through my mind when that thing bit me and i have all these cameras going and i see all this blood is this video is definitely going viral <laughs> just, just don't die <laughs> it would really go viral if you died yeah i'm sure it would have yeah found gopro footage so now you have blades. to carry this thing out while you're holding onto its head yeah wow, while she really is like a limp noodle while huh? while it's still alive she really is like a wimp noodle yeah she, one, she's gassed out she is done that's insane she is done wow man that's yep. That's some man shit right there, son. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of human beings are capable of doing that and just keeping it together. It's creeping me out just watching you hold on to that thing as you're walking through the, the woods with it. What I think it is more than anything, and you know, I hate to kind of take away from myself, but it's, it's what we're taught as kids. You know, We're taught to be fearful of snakes, that they're this evil, dangerous thing. And I can't tell you, I, th- I think that's why I've been so successful on social media is these people, they just freak out watching these snakes. You know, they can't believe it. And it's, they're not really that crazy. They're really not. I think you're just used to them. I think they're really fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why they're only in one state like this. Look at the size of that thing, man. Yeah. That thing's enormous. And they eat alligators. Oh, yeah. I've, I think, bro, I think they would eat you. I, I've really rescued do. three alligators from pythons. Wow. That's actually how I started my social media is I um, made the news, went kind of viral for rescuing an alligator from a python. I had a guy out on a guided hunt with me. He uh, recorded it, videotaped it, and it you know, made the news and... Uh, a local clothing brand, Flow Grown, in Florida, made my Instagram, made my social media, and was like, dude, you got to start using it. You know, we'll send you clothes. And that's wow. really how it all got started. That's crazy. That's how it got started. That's amazing. Look at these things. And man. I actually, this was the smallest of the three I've rescued. Um, it was the third one that we finally got on video because I, I, never, I never used to really record anything. Imagine how fucking confused alligators must be. Like, I thought we were at the top. <laughs> I, we were at the top forever. Yeah, oh, yeah. What happened? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? 2023, times are changing. 